Hey guys, welcome to day two of science for the week. You will be working for your five stars today. Now remember, our main goal is I can identify where to go to get medical care based on my medical problem. Here are your essential questions for this lesson. We want to be able to answer, what can I expect to see at each medical care facility? Let's look at your steps for synthesizing knowledge. Listen to the teacher, listen to the whole lesson, think about the information now, and think about the information later. Great, now let's review your vocabulary. Medical care. This is finding and treating sickness or injury. Doctor's office. This is an office where people who are trained to help people who are sick work. Emergency room. This is a room in the hospital for people who need help immediately. Dental office. This is a place where a dentist works and can help you with your teeth. Great job! You guys reviewed your vocabulary and you have earned one star. So our first question is, what do the machines do at the hospital? If you guys ever been to the hospital and seen all those machines, there's a lot. So we're going to read a story today to find out what those machines do. Our story is called Machines in the Hospital. It's by Travis Schaefer. Machines use energy to do work. Machines help us. We use machines to do many things. Let's look at the pictures of all these machines. People use machines in a hospital. Machines help people. Let's visit the hospital. There is a machine that beeps. It helps to show your heart rate. There is a machine that is flat. It helps you lie down and relax. There is a machine that pumps liquid. It helps put liquid into your body. There is a machine that gives out air. It helps you breathe. There is a machine with a scope. It helps you to see up close, kind of like a microscope. There is a machine that takes pictures. It helps you see your bones. There is a machine that is big and round. It helps see inside your body.
there is a machine that gives a shock. It helps restart a heartbeat. People use machines in the hospital. Visiting hours are over. It's time to leave the hospital. The end. Hey, thank you guys for reading that story with me. So let's answer a question about what we just read. What does an x-ray machine do? You see this picture? This is a picture from our story we just read. So we did talk about our x-ray machine, but we didn't call it an x-ray machine. But do you remember what this machine did in the story where you saw this picture? Does it take a picture of your bones? Does an x-ray machine cut your hair? Or does an x-ray machine look at your eyes? Make a choice. Great, an x-ray machine takes a picture of your bones. Okay, let's move on to what types of tools are used at a doctor's office. Hi, I'm Dr. David Hill, and today we're going to be talking about a few of the different instruments that your pediatrician might use when he or she examines your child. Now, children can find these things kind of scary when you come at them with them, so it's nice if they're familiar with them. A lot of children I see have a doctor's kit at home, and so we often start by comparing my toys to the toys they have. The one we usually use first is this. It's an ophthalmoscope, and it's used for looking in the eye. So I'm going to shine a light in the child's eye. While well, I look through this little there hole there to see, to see. When, I when I talk to kids, I talk about, I talk about hey, here's a flashlight. Here's a flashlight. Do, you like do you like to play with flashlights? So do I. So do I. And, then I and then I might ask them to look at something on the other side of the room if they're, if they're old enough to do so. The next instrument, the next instrument that they'll see and the one they're usually the most interested in is this. Is this. It's an otoscope. It's an otoscope. Of course, it's for, of course, it's for looking in ears. Also it's also for looking in noses and mouths. And mouths. A, lot a lot of physicians will use a little insufflator, insufflator bulb on the otoscope. This helps, this helps, to, this see helps to see the eardrum move and lets us know, lets us know whether an ear infection is present or not. I like to have the child touch the light and, and see that it's not hot and that it doesn't hurt before I actually put it in their ear. I'll also let them feel the little puff of air that I might be blowing in their ear. And then you're going to want to ask them to open up their mouth, which sometimes they do, sometimes they need a little, enc little encouragement, and a little look up the nose with that. Of course, the uh, tool that everybody is the most familiar with is the one that I keep around my neck right here, and that's the stethoscope. Obviously, it's for listening to the heart and for listening to the lungs, but what you may not know is that when doctors listen to the heart, we don't just listen in one place, we listen in four different places. So as you watch, so as your, doctor, you watch your doctor, you might notice that. And then we're going to go, to the, gonna go to the back and, and listen to all different parts, parts of the lungs. We try to, we try to encourage kids to breathe while we're doing, while doing that, that. And, and you can encourage it too by modeling it for them. So, so a few of our instruments, the stethoscope, the otoscope, the otoscope yeah. and the ophthalmoscope. Go ahead, go ahead if you can, familiarize, familiarize your child with these, talk to, talk to them, and then when I come in with them, they won't be quite so scared. Talk. All right, thank you guys. Hopefully you learned about a few of the tools that you may have seen before at the doctor's office, and maybe it'll better prepare you for next time you go. Okay, we have some questions coming up, so let's review the steps to critical thinking and problem solving. We need to listen to the question, listen to all of the answer choices, think about the choices, and answer the question by choosing one of the answer choices. What can you expect to see at a doctor's office? Okay, can you expect to see garden tools, medical equipment, or power tools? Make a choice. Good, you can expect to see some medical equipment like what we just saw in our video at a doctor's office. Fantastic, two stars. Now let's watch this video on why is it important to go to the dentist.
Dear Tim and Moby, can you tell me about teeth? Signed, Mangy Poo. Hey, sure thing, Mangy Poo. Your teeth are the first stop for the food we eat. They're like little tools in your mouth that cut, crush, and grip food so that it can be digested. Humans have 20 teeth when they're born, although it takes a while for them to erupt or come out from underneath the gums. At around age 6, these so-called baby or milk teeth start to get pushed out by adult teeth. They might hurt a little, but it's completely normal. They usually just pop out after getting really wiggly. If you're lucky, the tooth fairy might come at that point. Remind me to tell you about her later. Anyway, people have 32 permanent teeth. 16 on the top jaw, and 16 on the bottom. Let's take a closer look. The front incisor teeth bite and chop off pieces of food that can fit into your mouth. Your pointed canine teeth beside the incisors are there to help tear the food apart. Your premolars, or bicuspids, are used for crushing and chewing. Then the larger, flatter molars swash food so that it can mix with saliva to make a gooey mass that's easy to swallow. The molars farthest back in your mouth are often called wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth usually take a long time to erupt, well into adulthood for many people, and in some people, they just won't come out at all. Good call, Moby. Let's see what a tooth would look like if we sawed one in half. The hard outer layer of your teeth is called the enamel. In fact, it's the hardest substance in your body. Beneath the enamel is a softer layer called dentin. The dentin supports the enamel and gives the tooth its shape. The roots connect the teeth to the jawbone in the same way that a tree's roots connected to the ground. A hard substance called cementum covers the roots and anchors our teeth in place. At the center of your teeth is a soft mass called the pulp. The pulp contains blood vessels and sensitive nerves. Your teeth are really strong, but they can decay if old food in your mouth builds up and starts to grow bacteria. Big deposits of bacteria called plaque release acids that can eat a cavity in the enamel and expose the sensitive parts of your teeth. This can be painful. Cavities have to be drilled out to remove the decayed enamel and then filled with a hard sealant. This is something to avoid. So take good care of your teeth and keep them clean by flossing and brushing. Oh, that reminds me, I have to floss. Oh no. Stop it! Stop it! You're not helping me! That's not really how you floss, Moby. Goodness. Alright, so hopefully you guys learned a little bit about why it's so important to go to the dentist. We don't want to be in that situation where our teeth are hurting so badly. Up next is what happens at an eye exam. Have you guys ever been to an eye exam before? Eye exams are good for overall health, even if you have perfect vision. Simple and painless, an annual well vision exam offered only through BSP will not only check for vision problems, it can detect signs of other serious health conditions too, like diabetes and high blood pressure. First, your VSP doctor will get to know a little bit about you and your health history. It's important to inform your doctor of past injuries or serious illnesses because those can affect your vision. Then your VSP doctor will determine the sharpness of your vision by covering each eye separately and having you follow an object back and forth with your eyes. Your doctor will watch how far your uncovered eye moves to see the object. Your doctor may also ask you to follow the object with both eyes uncovered to find out how well your eyes are working together. Next, your doctor will determine your prescription needs by placing a series of lenses in front of your eyes. You'll be asked which lens helps you see more clearly. Don't be surprised if one eye sees better than the other. This is common. Your doctor will keep making lens adjustments to each eye until your vision is perfectly measured. If you need vision correction, the doctor will use these measurements to determine the lenses you need. 
Your doctor will also look at a magnified view of the front and inside of your eyes using a special lamp or microscope to examine all structures of your eye. This test not only detects eye conditions like macular degeneration and cataracts, it can detect other health conditions too, like high cholesterol and diabetes, making this test highly valuable and potentially life-saving. If you need glasses, your VST doctor's office can help you choose the frame that's right for you. They'll help with contacts too if you prefer those over glasses. And that's all it takes to keep your eye health in check every year. The first step toward all right thanks guys for watching that so there were lots of cool tools that you may see if you go to the eye doctor what part of the body does an ophthalmologist examine that's what we just watched so do did we just watch a video on them examining feet mouth or eyes make a choice Eyes, yes, an ophthalmologist looks at your eyes. Amazing, three stars, you guys. Next up, we have the question, what happens at an audiologist? We talked about them some last week, but let's watch a video to gain some deeper understanding. Today, I am going to the audiology clinic to do some listening activities with Pip. I will go to the reception and say my name. There will be other people waiting there too. It can be noisy. I can play with some toys at reception or my own games while I wait to see Pip. Pip will say hello to me at the reception. She is very tall, has brown hair and wears glasses. Pip will take me and my mom and brother upstairs to level one. We will walk into a small hearing booth where the listening games will take place. It is very quiet in the booth and the walls are soft like carpet. Pip will ask me to sit down on a black comfortable chair. She will talk to me for a bit to get to know me better. She will ask me about things I like to do and she might ask me about how school is going. There is a computer on Pip's desk and some headphones and other hearing machines. Pip will explain that we are going to be playing some listening games today. I have to wear some headphones on my ears and listen to some different sounds. Sometimes it is soft whistles. Sometimes it is people saying words, numbers, sentences. Sometimes it is a shh noise. Pip promises me that none of the sounds will be too loud or uncomfortable for me. So I don't have to worry about that. Pip explains there are no right or wrong answers in any of the games. Pip just wants me to do my very best and have guesses when I'm not sure. I'm allowed to have lots of breaks to eat, drink, play and stretch. There are toys to play with in the hearing booth and there is also a play area just outside the room with a comfy couch that I can visit too. Whenever I feel like a break, I can ask Pip. Once I have finished all the listening games, Pip will talk to my mom or dad or Kara for a while about how I went I can play in the hearing booth or in the play area outside the room while they are talking. And it is home time. All right, so obviously nobody's probably going to be named Pip if you go to the audiologist, but at least I give you some ideas of the hearing games or the hearing examination that you may um, have done. So what part of the body does an audiologist examine feet, ears, or eyes? Great, ears. Audiologists examine ears. Awesome job, you guys. You've earned four stars. Almost done. So let's review. The 
Okay, we're going to take a field trip to a children's hospital. I'm Penny from Kid Vision VPK. Hi, Penny. Hi. We're here today to find out about Joe the Badger Children's Hospital. Well, I can definitely help you with that. I'm part of the pediatric transport team here at Joe DiMaggio, and we bring children every day here to help them in the hospital because they're sick. We have many things in this truck to help them. Would you like to see what's inside? Yes, we'd love to see what's in an ambulance. Thank you. As a nurse, I monitor your blood pressure and your heart. This is going to measure your blood pressure. It's going to give you a hug, okay? And sometimes it hurts a little, but then it stops. And Maria, she's part of my team, and she's going to look at, make sure that you're breathing good. She's a respiratory therapist, and she takes care of your lungs, okay? And you see the, the green number? that tells me uh, things about your heart. The blue number tells me things about your respiration. Yellow tells me how you're breathing. Okay. The ambulance sometimes goes very fast with the lights, so we want to make sure that we are very safe. Is the ambulance driver part of your team? Of course. The ambulance driver, his name is Corey. Would you like to meet him? Yeah. All right, let's go meet Corey. Hey, Corey. Hey, guys. Hi. How's it going? Okay, guys. Come on up here. Check this out. Our job is, mine specifically, is to get these sick kids back to the hospital safe. See, we all have real important jobs. They're in the back helping the patient, and I'm up front here getting us to the hospital nice, safe, and sound. Push this button right here. Go ahead. That one. Push it. Oh, the sirens. The sirens. They say, get out of the way, I'm coming through, it's an emergency. So make sure that you know when you hear sirens and you see the lights flashing to get out of the way. Hi guys. Hi, I'm Penny from Kid Vision VPK. Okay, glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Christina. I'm a child life specialist here at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. Terrific. We, we just, just came, came from, from the ambulance, ambulance and we'd, we'd love to see what happens in the hospital. Great. Well, if you came from an, with an ambulance, this is where you come. This is our emergency room. Once here, the doctors are going to put you into one of these rooms called an examination room. When you're in here, a nurse or a doctor will come and see you and check out your body to make sure that nothing's wrong with you. Who wants to see what an examination is like? Okay, great. We're going to go into the room and check it out. So once we're in this room, a nurse is going to come in and check out your body and see how you're feeling. Here she comes now. Hey, David. How are you? My name's Heidi. I'm going to be today. I'm going to do a quick physical on you, okay? I just need you to lean forward and take a couple really big, deep breaths for me, okay? Like you're blowing out a candle. Go ahead, deep breath. Good job. Your lungs sound really good. Now, I'm going to take your temperature because I want to make sure that you don't have a fever. Open your mouth. Close your mouth. Good job. No fever. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take your blood pressure. I just want to make sure that your heart is working. It's going to give your arm a nice big hug, okay? Big hug. Hold on. It's almost done. Good job, David. You did really good. Guess what? You're all good. High five. Great. He's okay. okay. What would we do if David wasn't okay? In that case, we'd have to go to another part of the hospital where there's machines that look inside your body called the imaging department. Let's go. Great. in the hospital's imaging department. This is where we have MRIs, CT scans, x-rays, and so much more. This is Lynn. She's our imaging technologist, and she's going to tell us how the machines work. Good morning. My name is Lynn. I'm a CT technologist. I'm licensed and trained to operate the machines in this department. Why are machines important? Machines are important so we can look in your body to see if there's any problems that need to be fixed. Would you like to see how the machine works? Yeah. yeah. I work in the CAT scan department, and it's located in Pirate Island, so come on this way. Pirate Island. So x 
x-rays take pictures of your bones. This machine takes a lot of pictures of the inside of your body. What do you take pictures of? Well, we take pictures of your heart to see your blood pumping. We take pictures of your lungs to make sure you're breathing properly. And we take pictures of your brains, and that controls the whole body and how it functions. This is the CT scanner. It's like a big donut. The camera is inside here and goes around your body, taking multiple pictures. And then it's sent to a computer that processes it into a 3D image. I'm going to show you how it works. You go first. This machine doesn't look like a regular CT machine. We know that kids are sometimes afraid of having tests done, so we've made everything kid-friendly for them, so it looks more like a playground. Does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. Nothing touches you. The only thing that happens is the table goes up and in and out of the scanner to take the pictures. You have to stay very still, keep your head just like this, and don't move at all. The table moves in and out, and nothing will touch you. And what I will do is review with the nurses what they've been doing, what they know about you. And in and out, and nothing will touch you. You did a great job. How was that? Was that easy? Was it scary? Not at all, right? Good girl. So say the doctor needs a little bit more time to figure out what's wrong. You may stay overnight in a hospital room that looks just like this. Each room has a bed where you'll sleep at night, a pull-out couch for mom and dad to spend the night, a TV where you can watch movies and your favorite shows, and your own bathroom with a shower. What happens here? Once you're here, a lot of different people are going to come in to see you, and each person has their own special job. Hi, I'm the doctor. And what I will do is review with the nurses what they've been doing, what they know about you, and then I'll examine you, which could include listening to your lungs, to your heart, and feeling your stomach. And then afterwards, we'll decide what we need to do to make you better. Hi, I'm a nurse. My job is to take notes about your health, listen to your heart rate and breathing, and make sure you're getting better each and every day. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm the nurse's aide. I help the nurse. And I come to take your temperature and blood pressure to make sure that you continue to get better. Hi, my name is Elena. I am your food service worker. Here at Joe de Maggio, we offer room service. You can order any kind of food you like at any time, and I'll be more than happy to bring it for you. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Lazzi Dazzi, the resident clown here at the Joe de Maggio Children's Hospital. I provide smiles and laughter and distract everybody when they're not feeling so great. Come on, jump up. Yes, good girl. Hi, this is Nutmeg, everyone's favorite care partner. She gives lots of love, wags, and kisses. Come on, Nutty, let's go visit other patients. Let's go. Wow, there are a lot of people that take care of the children here. It's not such a scary place. You're right, and there's one more place I haven't shown you yet that you're going to love. Come on, let's go. Here at Joe DiMaggio, we believe in the power of play, so we have playrooms just like this on every floor of our hospital for children and families to come and play. It's great. Thank you so much for showing us the hospital today. We learned so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so that was a tour of a hospital, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, we have some similar hospitals here in Charlotte. Um, you guys may have visited them before, um, and maybe some of those things look familiar to you. So you have completed your review. You have earned five stars. Great job, you guys. Don't forget to complete your Google Form activities. You are all done for science today. See you later.